Welcome back, Netrunner players. Here we are in Cambridge, Massachusetts on June 21st, 2014 for the Regionals Tournament held at Pandemonium Books and Games. Swiss round number five. I'm on the left playing Kate. My opponent is on the right playing NBN. It's going to be a game. Coming into this round, I have three losses. And uh, we've played four rounds, a total of eight games. So it's five wins. That's ten prestige points. Four more points available in this matchup. What is going to go down? Well, while we're shuffling and doing all that nonsense, uh, let me just remind you, uh, Pandemonium Books and Games did a really good job running this tournament. Uh, you know, it took a long time, but that's because these things take a long time. Uh, they did it as fast as is reasonable. Uh, they didn't get any rules wrong. They, they managed the tournament well overall. There was plenty of space in the store. Uh, if you play Netrunner and you're in the Cambridge, Boston, Massachusetts area, uh, I don't know what the other stores are like, but you can't go wrong going there. For your Netrunner needs, they had every data pack <laughs> on the shelf. Uh, other news. Uh, if this is the first match you're watching, you know, all the previous Swiss rounds uh, that recorded successfully. Uh, and the final Swiss round and the elimination games, you know, may have been uploaded already or will soon be uploaded uh, to my YouTube channel. So check them out as well as, uh, you know, I know some people just discover this channel because it's a regional so maybe they watch videos for the first time I've been uploading and commenting on Netrunner games for a while there's plenty of uh, videos all over my channel from various New York tournaments in the past over the past year uh, so check those out all right this game is starting with a hedge fund is it gonna start with two ice after that hedge fund isn't it weird how some people go ice ice hedge fund and some people go hedge fund ice Oh, did he just take a credit? I think he just took a credit. Um, right? Oh, no, he didn't. What did he do with the third click? Oh, draw a card. That's okay. Sure gamble. Run R&D. Nothing doing. Run HQ. Viper. Okay. So when I see this Viper, right, uh, out of breaking news, right, I'll lose my click. I don't care. Um, do I want to end the run? Is it worth it? It's a lot of money to not end the run. Probably should just let the run end. Okay, I did let the run end. Okay, good. Um, when you see a Viper out of NBN Breaking News, you're thinking it's a deck pretty similar to the one I'm playing, right? I stopped using Viper a while ago in favor of RSVP um, as my four strength code gate of choice. But yeah, it's, you know, if the, if the core, uh, runner can't deal with it in an efficient way, it is mighty taxing. So I'm expecting a, you know, a deck kind of like mine, right? He's going to tax me. I run a remote and a Viper, really? That's, you know, a Viper on a remote. That's interesting, right? That tells me uh, it's probably a Sansan, -San, right? And that he's just looking to drain my money um, so that I can't trash the Sansan -San, right behind it. Uh, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't put an agenda behind a, uh, right? See, I still have five credits for the way he set the trace. And he gives me an Astro script. Okay. Um, the reason I decided to break that trace is because I would have five credits remaining to trash any Sand Sands and, or score any PDs, and there weren't any. Uh, okay, so I'll just take some money because clearly this is going to be a taxing situation. Or I could install a four strength uh, Atman uh, and cut those Vipers down to size. Just run them last click for one credit. Boom. Uh, okay, but yeah, he, he gave up an Astro script. Um, you know, I don't know what the people he plays against are not as uh, aggressive in their running uh, as I am. But yeah. Okay, so I'm going to keep checking R&D. Checked it once every turn. How can I not when it's free? And it remains uh, free as well. Even with that ice in front of it, he did not res. Uh, what should I do now? Um, 
Getting through that Viper is kind of annoying right now. Let's drop a mem chip. Okay. I think I have an Overmind in my hand, which is why I'm dropping the mem chip early. Uh, get an extra Overmind counter when it matters. Hedge fund. Ooh, hedge fund sweeps hedge fund this early in the game. That's pretty good right there. Pretty good. All right, he's putting more ice in the remote. Uh, more more cards in the remote. Can I run there, get through, and trash it if it's a sand sand? Is that possible? I'm doing the math on that right now. <laughs> He definitely has enough money to use a sand sand. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, it costs eight. Um, and I have three. I have seven, and he has a. He has a ten. He needs eight to score with a sand sand. If I break the viper, assuming he's gonna boost the, I'll lose the click. He's gonna boost the end the run. Uh. With his two, I have one link. Yeah, let's diesel and see what we can see. Anything in, in there to help me out? Anything? All right, there's a key master. <laughs> Not as good as a four strength Atman. Um, it's gonna cost me <laughs> four to break through the subroutine on Viper, and not one. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna do it. Right, because I still have five left over. And it's a Beal. Okay, he's just dropping the agendas. Um, right in there. I don't need that Deus Ex against this MBN deck. Now, when I scored that Beal, expecting a Sand Sand, yeah, you can see it in his hand. That's the first time I saw that coming, right? See, I rely a lot. You know, a Shaper deck is a deck where you basically have the tools in there somewhere to take care of any kind of opponent, right? So I have the Deus Ex in there for the Jinteki opponent, and I've got, you know, I've got the Parasites and stuff to deal with people with small ice, and I've got Atmans to deal with people with big ice, and I've got, you know, Data Suckers, and every kind of different, you know, tool is in the deck. A Femme to take care of Toll Boots. Uh, indexing when I've got to go to R&D, right? Nerve Agent when i got to go to HQ. No matter what the opponent is doing, I have in my deck somewhere a tool to deal with it. So I rely heavily on figuring out what the opponent is doing, right, based on the cards I see from accessing um, R&D, HQ, and seeing their ice, uh, and then tutoring the appropriate weaponry and responding accordingly, right? So when I see Viper, Viper like that, all I'm thinking is, oh, he's playing a taxing MBN. When you tax people, you want to install sand sands and things and NAPDs and make them spend all their money and then, you know, score um, when they can't afford to go in and deal anything about it. But instead, there was a mid-seasons that I did not expect at all. If I had seen that mid-seasons, if I had expected it, if I had, you know, gotten a smell of it at all, I would have not run, gotten a magnum opus, Take eight, take eight, take eight credits, right? Uh, he put out that Astro and let me score it. That should have tipped me off that maybe he was looking for a mid-season's opening. Um, but as soon as he let me have the Beal, I was like, oh, oh crap. I said I would access. I have to, said I would access after I broke the Viper, so I have to, you know, take the Beal. I can't. I couldn't be like, oh no, no. Now that I've seen it's a Beal, I don't want it. <laughs> I was expecting a Sansan. Um, Okay, so there was a there was a slight discussion of what you know he wanted to do with the TMI and R and D, um, so we just fooled around with that a bit. I guess he spent most of his money on it. That's fine. And now I've got I decided to just take all the tags um, from the mid season, right? Uh, I guess I could have eliminated three of them by using some of them with my credits. Uh, but I, I felt like I needed the credits more. If I was going to be able to, you know, I already had four points here and one of the Astros. 
uh, I felt like even though I was midseason that I could probably score three more points uh, before he could midseason's seven points. I mean, psychographic seven points. Um, and if he had a scorch, I was just willing to take the scorch. Uh, but I've already seen two influence spent on Vipers, which brings 15 down to 13. Uh, I wasn't feeling that he actually had the scorch uh, in the deck. Okay, so now I'll get this magnum opus. Um, even now, I could use it to clear the tags. Take two, clear tag. Take two, clear tag. The next turn, take two, clear. Take two, clear. But I'm I'm worried if I do that, that he's or take four, clear two, right? That he'll just instead of psychographics in by because I eliminated the tags, that he will uh, just install and score behind that viper he's got there. Um, Alright, so now that he has more credits, he the, the psychographics possibilities are open for him. Uh, he didn't have enough credits to actually use the psychographics before, but now he has a hedge fund, so yeah, he can definitely psychograph. Alright, so I had to test run that magnum opus just to get it out. I'll draw it, I'll install it, and I'll take a bunch of money. He's not pressuring me right now, right? He's just sort of sitting back... Um, you know, drawing and taking money, probably looking to psychographic something. Um, now that I have the opus, actually, I could have taken six, uh, you know, and run HQ. Uh, there are agendas in there that we can see. Okay, he's psychographicsing now. Yep, I expected that. As long as it's not... Oh, it's an asterisk script. Okay, great. Hmm... <laughs> Well, I still feel, you know, A, you know, I, I messed up, you know, assuming his deck was not mid-seasons, right? And when I sat down to play this guy, he actually told me that he was a relatively new player, uh, but he had played a lot. So uh, he only, you know, he'd been playing for a short period of time, but had played a lot of games in that short time. And that's a lot of the reason why he caught me off guard. All right, so there's a closed account, but I don't care because I have Magnum Opus. Uh, I can just take money back immediately. Um, you know, he's going to play it. He's, you know, I'm not going to remove the tags. <laughs> you know, I wonder on the math. Someone do the math on whether removing the tags was, was with the Magnum Opus would have done it, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tags. I could have blocked three of them. You know, it actually, if I would have blocked all the tags on the midseason by throwing away all my money to begin with, Okay, it would have been harder to get the Opus out in the first place, that's sure. Oh, now he's got a Beal and an Astro script. Funny that he just used the Astro token so quickly uh, to get that Beal out of hand. Uh, maybe he was just worried that, you know, I was going to run HQ and take it. Uh, he needed to score it immediately, willing to give up his Astro token. Usually I'm going to save my Astro token uh, for the end game, But maybe also because he has the Psychographics play, uh, he doesn't feel he needs the Astro token. Uh, he's icing up HQ. Yeah, I mean, uh, closed accounts after I took eight. That's fine. Well, it's a little more annoying after I've taken eight. Meanwhile, suddenly it's four four. Yeah, you know that's that's one. You know that's that's the major negative here, right? Uh, so like I was saying, he's a new to the game, so his deck doesn't fit a standard you know, archetype that I'm used to, right? When I see, when someone's playing mid-seasons, I expect them to come out of the game and not really play heavy ice uh, like Viper that costs a lot to res, right? To play cheap ice and not even res their ice, to save all their money um, and just play transactions and not play sweeps so you catch fun that everyone plays, right? But to play restructure, um, right? Go for the big money, so that you can really mid-season someone, uh, you know, a, 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 cor a criminal runner especially, who's going to get super rich really quickly, like an Andromeda. But he wasn't playing like that. And because he wasn't playing like that, I didn't think his deck was a mid-season's deck at all. And because I was wrong, uh, I got into a bad situation. You know, my answer for mid-seasons is get Magnum Opus first. So, you know... 
maybe the new answer is clear the tags, but it's not something I thought of at the time. It's not something I practiced or ever had to do or ever had to do the math on in the past. I went, suddenly you go to this regionals tournament, and this is, this is exactly why, you know, it's worth it to travel uh, for this kind of tournament. All right, you know, the thing that you, you know, worry about. Okay, so here's the situation. Uh, putting down this Atman at five. Probably should have put it at four, but I didn't have a data sucker, right? And without a data sucker, I won't be able to break the TMI, uh, but I will be able to break the Vipers with it more efficiently. So because I don't have data sucker, I'm just setting it at five, and I'm running R&D. Okay. He accidentally showed me an extra card. It didn't matter. Oh, so like I was saying, right, you go to these faraway tournaments that you can encounter new things uh, that you haven't seen before. And this is something that definitely I have not seen before, which is an NBN that actually ices up and plays mid-seasons uh, at the same time. And because I hadn't seen it before, I didn't know what to do about it. Now I know. Not getting a data sucker early also was really painful. Yeah, Overmind, I don't have any memory left for you. <laughs> Sorry. All right, he put his sand sand in there. What do I what do I have? I'm um, running his remote. Uh, am I running the remote? Oh no, because I was, I almost ran the remote on the third click. I decided not to because it's Viper. I'm gonna run it on the last click. I just want to make sure that after dealing with Viper, I have enough money to trash Sand Sands or uh, something like that, right? And the reason I want to do this is because he hasn't scored anything, so I'm feeling, yeah, he doesn't have a psychographics in hand. And he hasn't been able to find one. And he's only has four points, and he used his Astro token. So I can sort of prevent him from scoring by trashing the Sand Sand, even at this stage of the game. Man, I'm really wondering what his deck looks like. He's got a lot of ice. He's got Sand Sands and closed accounts and mid-seasons. And it's like, wow, what is, what is that deck list? He's got everything. I could. How do you find room for all this in the same deck? Hey, well, I'm going to run that remote, make him res. It's a pop-up window, see? Um, I'm not a big fan of the pop-up window on a remote server. Well, I mean, it didn't matter there. I couldn't I couldn't trash a sand sand anyway. Uh, you know, no matter what, I did that turn. But, I, you know, I had to check uh, to see if it wasn't an agenda. I guess he can score with a sand sand now. He's got Caduceus and Viper and... Oh, my God. Yeah, that's something else, you know, I never really thought of is using the taxing ability uh, to help with mid-seasons, right? You put the agenda in the remote, they run, they spend all their money breaking all the ice, and then uh, they don't have any left... And then you can mid-season them on the cheap. Instead of, you know, getting a ton of money to mid-seasons, just take away all their money in mid-season. But anyway, so I got my Inti. So now I can run R&D for two credits because my Opman is strength five. Pretty much just going to go for an indexing play. I play the same old thing, and of course he wants to see my trash. Yeah, I just got really thrown off my game uh, because something was unexpected, right? Um, you know, I had never seen that combination before. He's going to throw away his wraparound, put something else there. And take some money. Okay.
All right, well, I still have Magnum Opus, which still beats his remote server. I'm drawing for answers. No data suckers, no parasites. Really rough draw here. Um, I don't really want to throw anything out that I have already installed on the table. But I might have to. Yeah, I tried to play Overmind in this tournament. Um, I'm thinking that I'm feeling now that it wasn't necessarily the best idea. <laughs> oh, he found a breaking news. Oh, right, that card. Now he's one away. Not great. Not great that we're at game point here. All right, so I'm going to test run something. What am I going to test run? Test running my femmes. That means I've got to throw something out, right? Because I'm out of memory. So I'm throwing out the really expensive Otman, which is really a shame. Uh, but I'm putting the fem token on the TMI, so the TMI is still one to get across. Right? That giant outman wasn't useful for anything else uh, besides uh, that TMI anyway, so that's, that's sort of a break, you know, it doesn't really matter. But now I have a Sentry Breaker, a Kogi Breaker, and a Barrier Breaker, and a Magnum Opus. Even though they're the three possibly most inefficient breakers you can imagine. If I had a Data Sucker and another memory, uh, the efficiency would go way up in a hurry. Um, but I don't. I just didn't get a Data Sucker in this game. But I'm going to play indexing, and I've got a bunch of money, so I'm pretty confident I can break any ice uh, that he reses in front of the TMI. And I know the remote is not a Jackson Howard, so it's a Caduceus. Okay. Uh, he pays three. I pay four to break both subroutines with Fem. Um, I pay one for bypassing TMI. Oh, I let him have the three credits on the Kadusha. He was already so rich, I only broke the end the run subroutine on Kadusha, saved myself a credit, because I needed that credit to be able to run again after my index. And I think my index turned up nothing, which is a shame. If I remember correctly, this index was particularly awful and unhelpful. Yeah, it's like I could run again, but why? <laughs> Am I just not going to run again? Yeah, look, I'm just taking money because... Uh, there's nothing in R&D, so that means if I'm going to get points, uh, I basically have to... Here, I have to run HQ... And make sure he doesn't have the agenda. So I run HQ, one for pop-up window, three to break Viper. It's last click. I don't care about losing a click. I'm going to access a card and make sure he doesn't have a winning agenda. And here's the thing. That index, even though I didn't see anything, right? Sweep sweep. Even though I saw nothing on index, I do know that until he draws five cards, I can do whatever I want because he doesn't have, a win he doesn't have an agenda. So I can just wait for him to draw those five cards. Um... And in the meantime, I could just take a bunch of money uh, and wait. Right? I have all the three breakers. There's no server he can set up. I can't get into it if I have enough Magnum Opus money. He has a closed accounts to reset, but I'll just take eight again. Um, plus, he already used one closed accounts. I didn't realize he had another either. <laughs> uh, is he going to play it? Uh, nope. Uh, he didn't. Yeah, he only drew, I think, one card that turn, so it's just like, well, 
Oh, see, okay. So there was a situation where the Fem was test run uh, on the previous turn, but I um, I forgot to put it back up top, and then I drew. So what I did is I took the cards that I drew and put them back in. Uh, I took the Fem, I shuffled. Um, he agreed that, that was a, a good solution to, oops, I drew cards. Um, without putting the fem back on top, so... Oh, because I used a diesel, right? So... Put the fem back on top and dieseled properly. Put the cards I originally dieseled back in, so... Didn't matter, really. I'm gonna need big money to install the fem again. Well, I got another mem chip, that's good. And I'll take money. I know he's not drawing any agendas. Oh, and he psychographics to NAPD. That's it. Oh, that was hard. That was really annoying. Yes, I think... What could I have done better that game? Number one... Um, you know, I, I always have been weak to people who play uh, a deck that doesn't match my expectations. Because I basically figure out what they're doing based on ice and early accesses. And if I figure wrong... I'm going to bring out the wrong weaponry to deal with that answer, right? Uh, that magnum opus came too late. Uh, you, you, I don't install that magnum opus every game. I'm only going to install that if I absolutely think they're playing mid-seasons or Scorch or something. Uh, and I'm going to need to take a huge pile of credits to prevent it uh, from happening. And I did not see that mid-season's coming, so I didn't do that. And two, I should have removed the tags, but that was not a si I've never been in a situation where uh, I had to remove tags like that. And three, I just I got slightly unlucky with no data sucker. A data sucker would have super saved me in that game because I would have made a four Otman uh, with a data sucker. I could have cleared TMI. I could have cleared Viper. Um, you know, that was what was protecting him from most of the game, uh, and it was taxing me for most of the game, because I was breaking the Viper with a Keymaster for four, and well, I could have been doing it for one. You know, it's pretty much, uh, it's a shame. All right, well, that's how things go. You only get in a tournament, you got one shot. Right, if I had to play against that again, uh, I probably would not lose, or not lose as badly. I should have been tipped off when he let me have the Astro script originally, uh, but the reason he didn't mid-season off that is because I still had uh, plenty of money uh, at that point. You know, the, the economic differential was not large. So here's my turn to MBNU, Andromeda. I'm counting my deck to make sure I did not mix up the cards. Notice I have white sleeves on both decks. Let's see. You know, I'm not mid-seasoning, but let's see if I can tax him. Let's see if I can tax it. Nope. Did not like that draw. Gonna go for a new one. I think there were two agendas and no ice, so... From here, that looks like a hand in his hand that I would keep. I see a, uh, I see a sure gamble in there at least, right? Yeah, it looks like he's keeping that. I'm gonna give it a really thorough shuffling now. Really can't afford to lose this game. After losing the first one. Also, I'm really just hoping for that first turn sweep sweep. Oh, that would be so nice if I could sweep right away against Andromeda. So much money. There was a lot of first turn sweep sweep against Andromeda in this tournament overall. 
Yeah, I saw it more frequently at this tournament than I've seen uh, elsewhere recently. But maybe you just don't play against Andromeda enough. Um, you might be like, well, you don't play against the most common runner enough? Well, listen, not everyone, people in New York are not playing Andromeda necessarily. Oh, uh, is it Ice Ice and... I don't have it. Oh, All right, he's got two sure gambles. Oy, okay. Let's see if I can't get rid of that money. A data sucker? Okay, you got your data sucker. And security testing. Now, here's something I have experience with, right? Security testing. I played uh, some games recently against criminals uh, who had security testing, and what would happen is I would tax them down to nothing. But thanks to security testing on cards like Pad Campaign uh, that I installed, which I didn't have enough ice to protect they would just get all their money back even after I made them bankrupt, right? So I know how to deal with security testing. It, it's, it must go. I cannot allow that card to, uh, to exist. So I definitely I need some sort of tag uh, to kill that off uh, as quickly as possible. I'm going to set up the remote to force Andromeda to run something, you know, right away. I'm not going to let him sit back and build some kind of rig or who knows what. I think he ran archives. Oh, he security tested archives, uh, which he gets the data sucker and two credits. Can't go wrong with that. All right, he's going to run the remote. No res. Sand Sin, will you trash? Goodbye, money. You know what Sand Sin might as well have said on it? Make the runner lose a click and five credits. What a great event that would be. You play it for, you know, only cost you a click. The runner loses a click and five credits. I'll play that all day long. Okay, he's so installing a Plaskrete. I guess he's preparing for any eventuality, right? The opposite of me, whereas I'm trying to guess and be efficient. Um, well, not guess, but, you know, figure out what you're doing. I wouldn't play a Plaskrete unless I was sure that your deck was a Scorch deck, right? He had no evidence to suggest my deck was going for any sort of meat damage. Um, but he played a Plaskrete anyway, which is, you know, a click and three credits. So it's like, thank you for wasting that. Uh, and now I'm icing up archives. I have to block that security testing. I, you know, I cannot allow that to continue. He runs R&D. Pop-up window. Thank you. And what do you see? Pad campaign. I see an Inti in his hand. I can see... So he can take care of Wraparound. I see a special order. He can... Right? There's another Sand Sand. Click. You lose five credits, right? Are you going to spend the last of your money on it? No, he's not. Oh, he's keeping his money. Which means I'm keeping my Sand Sand. Runs Archives. Roto Turret. Boom. Take that Data Sucker out. That was worth it. That cost me a lot of money for that roto turret, um, but I was planning on it. That data sucker, uh, you know, had some virus counters on it. I feel like that was worth it uh, to get rid of it and also to keep it from security testing. Well worth the four credits. Okay, I'm going to put the pad campaign down, which lets some security test, but that's okay. He should know it's a pad campaign. He just saw it in R&D. Quandary keeps you out. 
he already used a special order. Um, so, oh, but this is zero Otman. Zero Otman, great play here. All my ice strength zero. The Roto Turret and the Quandary. Where's my pad campaign? What am I going to do? Stacking up that remote big time. See, even though he's got uh, an Inti, an Otman, and a security testing, he only has five credits. Uh, his economy hasn't been building. He doesn't have Desperado. Not having Desperado really hurt him here. He would have a lot more credits if he had it. Okay, he's going to go for the account siphon. In response to the account siphon, I will res Ash. Leaving myself, I think, with only like one or two credits there. One credit? Is he going to... You know, not many. Um, so I, he says he will not siphon. He accesses. There's a closed accounts. Um... He drew the Desperado. He's still tagged from Ye Account Siphon. He did not remove the Account Siphon tags. Or did he? I saw him draw at least two cards after that account siphon. Hmm. Curious what happened there. I should have just closed his accounts and trashed security testing. There's an NAPD. He cannot score. He's got Desperado now, though. It's my go. Trash the security testing. All right, well, I got big money for my hedge fund and such. Man, that remote is stacked. It's probably like Ash, Ash, San San, something. It doesn't even need an ice on it. <laughs> Alright, well, he took a bunch of money. He security tested the pad campaign for three, installed the same old thing, used it as an account siphon. He broke the quandary for one. I res to San San before he could siphon. He chooses to siphon away my remaining credits. Oh, no, okay, so the first siphon, of course he didn't get tagged, because he didn't actually siphon, he just accessed. Derp, 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 I'm dumb. <laughs> but this time he siphoned, and it was a third, four, it was a <laughs> last click siphon. He's tagged. Closed accounts. Boom, there goes your money. He knew the closed accounts was in there. Yeah, he he first click he ran the pad came in with security testing and Desperado giving him three to bring him up to six. Click two, he installed same old thing. Three and four, same old thing. Account siphon. I res the sand sand to get rid of money. He siphoned the rest, um, and then that was the end of his turn. The next turn, I responded with uh, take you know get pad campaign credit, closed accounts, take two more credits. Um,
He now removes the tags. The security testing is still alive. Uh, I don't think I had a chance really to get rid of it yet. I ice up HQ to prevent future siphoning and take some money. And take some more money. He's really wise. I mean, he could be just, you know, installing an R&D interface. You know, a lot of Andromedas at this point, or at least way earlier than this, would have installed an R&D interface or played Maker's I Indexing and run through that uh, pop-up window, an R&D. I was very surprised he wasn't doing that. But I'm also sort of upset he wasn't because I could have used those pop-up window uh, credits. All right, is he going for the remote now? No res, Ashtray 6. He just trashes Ash and does not beat the trace. He's going to go for it again. I res another Ash. Trace 4. He just trashes that Ash um, without beating the trace. And now he's down to one credit. <laughs> so he can't trash my Sand Sand, which is still rezzed, right? That Sand Sand's been rezzed, but unused. It's unused because of... Okay, the... Um, you know, I rezzed it off an Account Siphon Defense. And there we go, the breaking news that had been sitting on it the whole time. I advance it for one to score it plus the sand sand, and use my remaining credits to trash the security testing. He's down to one credit thanks to those ashes um, draining his remaining money. He has a Desperado, but he has one credit, a zero Otman. He can run archives to get one credit, but it costs two for him to break the Roto turret, so that's not going to profit anything from him. He can't profit running R&D. Uh, he'll just break even and see a card, uh, but he'll be giving me money, which I need desperately because I'm at zero. Um, HQ, he could get in for one if I don't res the ice in front of the quandary. Um, I have a res sand sand he absolutely can't trash because he doesn't have the money for it. So suddenly, what looked like a weak... You know, position is suddenly a very strong position. And that's how you beat a Count Siphon. Okay. He's going to play Forged Activation Orders. It's RSVP. That is going to keep you out. Because even though you can break... See, that Quandary... A lot of people would have thrown that Quandary away. Right? Because it only costs one to break once they have a zero Otman. But look, I put an RSVP in front of it. Suddenly, it's, it's back to life. Uh... He can't spend the one credit to break the quandary because RSVP won't let him. I trashed that data sucker early with the rotor turret. Because of that, his zero Otman has a really hard time breaking the RSVP. It's basically impossible. And now my, the sand sand that I rezzed in response to an account siphon is scoring out all the agendas. Well, he's got a new data sucker, but he's going to have a hard time filling it to begin with. Um... He runs. Oh, he's taking the Astro script. Ooh, well, if I drew that, that would have been that would have been game, huh? But he's not trashing my pad campaign or my sand sand. Ooh, he takes another agenda. Ooh, I could have used that. Looks like I'm holding agendas though, and yep, I'm using my sand sand to score all of them. Somehow I have a feeling like this is game over next turn unless he finds four points, which is going to be really hard with three credits, two data suckers. Um, no matter what you're playing. Okay, so is he... Taking all the money. Trashing the sand sand is sort of pointless-ish now. He has a siphon. I don't think he can use it. He's running R&D. 
He sees a shipment from Sansan. -San. That's going to help me out because now I can, you know, I can score even if he siphons. Uh, and I have zero credits. All right. He's going to run ye remote. I'm not going to res. And he is going to trash the Sansan. -San. I don't understand trashing the Sansan. -San. I have the Astro token and six points. So there's really not much you gain from doing that. Yep. Shipment. Astro token. Beal. Done. Eight. Got it. Had a Beal in hand he could have taken, uh, but also a Sansan. -San. The wraparound was useless once he had Inti on the table. Um. All right. So two NBNs beat each other one after the other and being the strong guys so you remember back in the day when people talked about how runners too strong corpse too weak well you haven't heard that talk in a while uh, you know, nowadays both sides pretty strong they've given the corp plenty of nasty ice decent weapons you know things like Inazuma RSVP people have learned a lot how to play corp better um, you know, AstroScript, <laughs> which has been around since the core set. People <laughs> right, are playing it. Um, yeah. It's good times, everybody. All right, stay tuned. Round six, the final round of Swiss is coming your way soon. <laughs>